welcome to the Wednesday DC Today, the very final day of the month of May. And uh, we had a little excitement in the markets today. Uh, kind of dropped uh, closer to 300 points at one point, but then came back um, to kind of where it had opened on the day. And the Dow ended up only down 0.4%, the S&P 0.6%, NASDAQ 0.6% all down. Uh, Point-wise, the Dow was down 134 points. Um, and it was mostly in financials. You you had pretty good rallies in some of the other sectors. It was kind of a mixed bag. Um, the main issue, just to get it done once and for all, is the House is now going to go vote tonight, and the debt ceiling uh, deal is done. They did have a little fun today getting through the Rules Committee, and you had about 20 Republicans uh, hold that up, which was nowhere near enough to stop it. But some Democrat votes were, were needed because of the slim majority the Republicans have, and that moved it forward. There was, there, there's been some talk in the press about are some of these uh, Freedom Caucus guys so mad about this bill that uh, they're going to boot out Kevin McCarthy. And um, I'm talking to several people on the Hill that say it's a joke and there's no real murmurings there. But, you know, people, you may have heard the press likes the drama. But no, this thing looks done. And it looks like to be getting done with less drama than I thought there would be. And uh, I thought there would be exponentially less drama than the press has played into. So you got even less than I got. And I was the, uh, than I forecasted. And I was the opposite of a drama queen on this thing. So quite, quite interesting how it played out. Um, what do I want to talk about with that? I don't think you care much about the procedural side of how we got there. But all that to say, the basics, if you missed uh, Tuesday's DC Today, which was yesterday, May 30, that had more of the details of it. I'm going to leave it there for now, so I'm not redundant day by day. The economic news today was in the jolts, the job opening data, that um, there were 10.1 million unfilled open jobs in the month of April, and that was up from 9.75 million the month before. So a big part of the increase of unfilled job openings uh, is in construction. If you're trying to get higher unemployment, meaning less jobs available and more people looking for jobs, which I think would be the objective of either a horrible human being or a central banker, um, the fact of the matter is that it's a pretty tough thing to make happen when there continues to be more job openings coming than people who are unemployed and looking for work. So there you go. Um, as far as stock market stuff goes, right now in the Russell 1000, it's 1,000 companies, much bigger than the S&P 500, but all large cap, um, there are 4% of companies at a relative high, and there are 25% at a relative low. That's how weak the breadth is in the market. I'm kind of finding a new data point every day to share with you to make the point that while the headline market index looks okay for NASDAQ and S&P, the underlying reality of the market and the companies within the market has not been good. The Dow is actually down a little in the year, and you're really just talking about a very small amount of companies of a massive capitalization doing all the work, and that's that with that. Um, oil prices, uh, due to kind of weakening demand or, or, or un- uh, impressive demand levels uh, that are coming out of the data from China. Crude is now down to close to $68 a barrel. And that is entirely a demand story with, with China. And we'll see how that shakes out. And then finally, the Fed Funds futures today flipped. There was a 40% chance yesterday of them pausing at the next meeting and a 60% chance of another rate hike. It flipped today to a 69% chance of a pause. So therefore, a 31% chance of a hike. So the momentum moved kind of, you know, reversed towards no rate hike at the next meeting as uh, one of the new, uh, one of the Fed governors who's expected to be named vice chair came out and said he wanted a pause at the next meeting. And so their messaging, their signaling, you know, seems rather uh, clear at this point. I expect the futures will be pricing in more of such probability in the days ahead. That's about all. I know I went through that quickly, but uh, it was, you know, just another day in the market. And tomorrow we'll start off the month of June and we'll come back to you again with another DC Today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. 
Thanks for reading the DC Today.